Hey everybody, welcome back. It's Idiomatic Entertainment back again with another video. And this is an album review. This album is by hip hop artist Joe Jazz from London, England. Released in August 2020. This is his third album. Joe Jazz spelled J O E J S. Um, so, this is Four Wing Island. And let's get right into it. Four Wing Isle is track one. This starts the album off with a pretty upbeat song about the four-wing island of the album title. It seems to be a track about escapism, you know, just getting away from your troubles. It's He talks about, you know, llamas walking around freely, you know, lakes being filled with free sun pouches. And, you know, it probably speaks to just relaxing and being chill and, you know, being able to enjoy the things that you like, you know. It sounds pretty dang relaxing to me, though I don't know about drinking uh, from a lake in general, even if it is Capri Sun, I think our past. Considering, you know, what else might be in there, you feel me? The track switches up to a much more aggressive tone towards the later part of the song. And, you know, it gets more aggressive with the beat and the vocal um tone. It's pretty sudden. And it basically turns to, you know, a song about keeping your negative opinions to yourself. You know, brushing off haters and whatnot. Being able to just be who you are without someone trying to turn you down or shut you up or anything like that. You know, just wanting to be accepted. And if not, then just leave me alone. And I definitely feel that's something I could personally relate to quite heavily. And it's not a bad track at all. Good way to start the album off. I really feel it. Track two is Sesh. S-E-S-H. This is all about skateboarding. Now, I've never been a skateboarder myself. Um, one time I got on a skateboard, I... Just got off it because I was scared, honestly, when I was, um, you know, much younger. And never got back on, really. There's references to, you know, just the, um, the trunk of the skateboard and just boarding and all that stuff. Um, I'm not really a skateboarder. This kind of reminds me of, like, um, you know, freaking um, that song by Hobson, Nolly, Nolly Trey Flip or something like that, where he's just talking about a whole bunch of skateboard references, really. Um, and I was just like, what? I don't skateboard. But... Overall, this will be more interesting for anybody who does skateboard. Um, you know, understanding the terms and the feel of it. But it does sound pretty peaceful and relaxing, setting the general tone of the album like the previous track as well. So, you know, not one of my favorites on the album, but I understand he's sharing his hobbies with us, and I have no problem with that. Just personally, not for me, um, subject matter wise, you could say. Next up is Mega Blastoise, track three. This is a pretty catchy sound to it on the production, you know, a little bit more confidence in the rapping. I kind of like it. And it's kind of nostalgic, too, with the lyrics, because there's references to Blastoise, obviously, in the title. Um, Adventure Time with Finn and Jake and the show Chowder, which was also on Cartoon Network as well, I believe. And I used to watch Adventure Time all the time when I was um, not growing up. I forgot how many. It's a few years back. I used to watch it. Pretty good show. I highly recommend it. Um, the chorus gave me gave me a laugh, really, you know, because he was like, um, never made crack, just Mac in the kitchen. And I'm like, good. Someone else saying, you don't got to cook crap to be a rapper. You could be normal person and make macaroni and cheese. Not everyone has to be like this hardcore, you know, rapper. You know, it's all right for you to be an alternative hip hop artist. Nothing wrong with that. But one line stands out in particular for being just not for me at all. It says something about like, um. You know, like the pus from her acne. And I'm just like, no, I don't like acne whatsoever. And I'm not licking anything. Pimples, I'm good. I pass. Um, but, you know, I'm just like, what? But outside of that, pretty good track. Probably one of the ones I would rank more so up higher on the album for my personal enjoyment. Next up is track four, Sally's Heartbreak Picnic. As you can tell from the title, this is no doubt like a breakup song, relationship song or whatnot. Pretty mellow. You know, talks about, like, tears showering the plants, you know. Um, definitely feel the pain. There's a contrast between a picnic, you know, and a heartbreak. Picnics usually you enjoy with your significant other and or family. Heartbreak leaves you feeling lonely and isolated and, and in pain. And it's not very, not a good feeling at all, of course. Um, you know, there's lines like sorrow sandwiches, a picnic for one. And I'm just like, he's really hitting home how melancholy and you know hurt sad depressed or whatever he is i'm sure some people would take that as like too emotional or maybe sappy i suppose um but it's still delivered with a sense of you know confidence and seriousness about the subject i'd say and um like just being very personable and that i can respect i dig the lyrics of the track as well as the sentiment without a doubt 
but once again this would be not one that I would have on repeat like that like the skateboarding song next up is five drop top tykes now this is more so of a banger of the album if there is one to be found here coming right after the heartbreak song though I see the braggadociousness I see Sally from the previous song being referenced and I'm like oh okay there's another um, Adventure Time with Finn and Jake reference here, which is pretty dang cool. I like that. Good taste. The production here sounds a little bit more experimental, maybe, as opposed to some of the rest of the album, but still sounds pretty dang good and fits the subject matter. There was a mention of, like, you know, gap teeth and, you know, beats being weird, and I definitely feel that. Some of these beats are kind of weird, but I still do enjoy most of them. And, of course, I can relate to having, you know, gap teeth and whatnot. But there's a sense of self-awareness, like, yeah, my beats are weird. Yeah, I have a gap tooth. Yeah, but screw it. I am who I am, and love me or hate me, that's not going to change me. And that kind of attitude towards these things, these these minor imperfections or flaws, um, something I highly can value and appreciate. Definitely one of the songs that's, once again, more so towards the top of my list for the album, and one that I can find replayability in. Next up is track 16. And that's not track 16, that's the title is 16. <laughs> this is a bit smoother, more thought-provoking. You know, he makes references to growing up as a teenager, you know, hence the title, I'm sure. You know, just awkward teenage years, you know, your mother being concerned about you. Talks about having friends dying at a young age. And, you know, the mourning and processing of all those emotions and situations that we sometimes wind up dealing with as a young man or woman. And, you know, how do we get through it? Um, it's much less happy and carefree compared to the rest of the album. You know, it takes away that whole, like, island vibe with the weird beats and all that. But, not a bad track at all. Next up is Four Wing Killer. This bangs more than Drop Top Tykes did, actually, I believe. Angry, aggressive, it bangs. Probably my favorite song on the album, or at least top three. Um... The Four Wing in the title, I assume, is a throwback to the album title and album track, Four Wing Island. Um, you know, he references his colorful style of dress here and being the Four Wing Killer from London. So he's making a reference to his city. Nothing wrong with that. I just can't get over this beat, really, because it's good, but then it switches up briefly. Still kind of catchy and experimental sounding a bit. And still, like I said, one of my favorite songs on the album, regardless. Um, the beat switch-ups I don't always enjoy, but hey. People get experimental when they make a beats, and I feel it. I like the boasting and the confidence in the style of fashion choice, as well as the flow and the delivery. You know, rock what you want to wear, be confident about it, no problem with that. You know, clothes don't make the man, the man makes the clothes, you feel me? If there's a track that I would be returning to more than others, it would probably be this one right here. Because, like I said, it's in the like, top two, top three track on the album for me. Good, good job. Next up is Planet at the Four Wing Island Lounge. And the Four Wing Island is 4WI, which I'm sure is an abbreviation for Four Wing Island. It's an instrumental track. A bit jazz sounding, you know, maybe, maybe jazz influence, and that's pretty cool. It's the shortest track on the album as well, understandably so, because it is just an instrumental. Um, something to just vibe out to um, before the following track really closes the album out. It's pretty smooth, it has some nice claps and keys i think it's piano there i guess it's hard for me to tell which instrument is which sometimes honestly this island has an a lounge on it though you know i was like wait let me let me try to get the whole concept of the four-wing island thing you know i was i was listening to it and really trying to um you know see what it's all about but i do see this as being a song that would be played during a lounge kind of like star wars you know with the, the katina cantina band or whatever they call it you know the, the, the kind of jazz sounding music kind of gave me that kind of vibe so that was pretty cool um, reminiscent of that, and I, you know, I kind of like Star Wars, so hey. Next up is track nine, the last track on the album. It's Adventure with a question mark at the end. Maybe that's short for Adventure. Who knows? That's my interpretation of it. It sounds very danceable, very catchy. Um, also serves as the album closer and continues with this idea and concept of Four Wing Island. The chorus speaks heavily to being yourself and grooving to the beat of your own drum. Very relatable and something I like to see in artists, honestly. That confidence, that self-awareness, that self-realization, um, and how you deal with self-esteem issues. There's a beat switch up in the later part, once again, that mellows out the song, which I can personally do without, as it messes up the flow for me. It doesn't sound bad, that second beat, 
um, kind of misplaced, I guess you can say. But I would much more prefer a song if that first beat just continued throughout. And maybe that second beat could have been used in a whole different song, you know, for a whole different concept or something like that, you know. But to each his own. You know, um, still one of my favorite songs in the album, though. Regardless of that, you know, whole beat switch up, I still enjoy the song pretty much. And it's another one of the top three tracks on the album for me. And a good closer. Overall, this is the first album I've heard by Joe Jazz. And it's a decent outing. Um, definitely more on the alternative side of hip-hop, which I do enjoy at times. You know, I used to listen to, like, Odd Future, um, Wolfgang, Kill Them All, you know, um... And this is kind of giving me those kind of vibes, just maybe not as like, just not as aggressive and out there and like shock value as they are. You know what I mean? Um, it's a young artist still trying to find their sound, sounding maybe a little bit less refined than some of these more um, popular alternative hip hop artists that we've had in the past, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty short album, and that's good to do as well, especially when you're newer and up and coming. So, you know, you don't um, just ram it down their throats, but you give people a time to digest and a time to develop your craft as well, which is always nice. Um, it's just under half an hour long, nine tracks. It's about 28, 27, 28 minutes around there, I believe. So a quick listen. Um, it has a pretty decent variety of like subject matter and whatnot. Um, and speaking of which, it speaks of being original following your own path and you know he talks a lot about his hobbies like skateboarding and watching cartoons um comics and things of that nature you know his clothing style and you know if anything was missing um lyric wise i would say it's more introspection and depth into who he is as a person and where he's from a little bit more of that i would like to hear talk more about london england how it is to be a hip-hop artist especially alternative hip-hop in the uk and, you know, how you grew up, how it was being a youth there, um, especially for people like myself that have never been um, like outside of the country and whatnot. I think that would be a good way to take it and to get more fans from, you know, the USA, for example, and other areas. But overall, it's not bad sounding at all. Like stick to that um, production wise. It does quite sound a little bit different. Like I said, more so alternative hip hop sounding some a little bit experimental sounding beats as well. Um, I can really rock with that at times. It really depends on how far experimental you take it. So, not a bad album. Not having heard his previous stuff, I don't know what he's done and tried to do with his first two albums or any other songs. This is the first thing I'm hearing from him. And just based off this, um, without having any comparisons, I say this is pretty decent. And I would look forward to hearing his fourth album. Maybe I'll go back and listen to the first two to see how they are and how they stack up and compare to this current one. And I would recommend it more so if you share similar hobbies and if you're into alternative hip hop yourself. Definitely. This isn't going to apply for everybody, but it definitely is going to have a fan base that is loyal and dedicated to this, especially for the people that may be considered outcast or you know, a little bit different, a little bit weird. That's how I interpret it. And I would recommend giving it a listen. See what you like about it. So, once again, guys, as always, thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. Follow the channel on Twitch, Instagram, and Twitter. Subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. Click the thumbs up button if you like the video. And, of course, any other artists that have recommendations or suggestions for albums to review. If you have an album of yourself that you want me to review, maybe check out and take a look at Feel free to hit me up on Twitter or Instagram, just as Joe Jazz has, and I will see about it. No parent pro promises, no guarantees, but I am open and we can talk about it a little bit. Anyone else that just wants me to rec um, wants me to listen to something that they like, you know, that's open as well. Just leave it in the comment section below or message me once again on Instagram and Twitter and I'll check it out and let you know what I think. And of course, make sure you follow me on Twitch because I typically am streaming there. You know, I got the PS5. It's pretty nice and I'm looking forward to seeing some of you guys there as well and that's all for now thank you guys stay tuned stay safe stay healthy stay positive spread love you know what it is i'm out